Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. Today I'm back with another Homeschooling 101 video and I wanna share with you how to assess learning without tests. One of my goals as a homeschool mom is to get my kids to really enjoy learning. And one of the ways that I try to do that is I try to make our homeschool routine look as little like school as possible. And so tests are one of those things. A lot of times people will ask me how I go about testing my children. And other than the standardized testing that my kids have to take because the state says so in grades three, five, and eight, other than that, I don't do any sort of testing at all with them. So usually the response to when I tell people that is, well, how do you know that your kids are learning? And the, the fact is, is that it is really easy to assess your kids learning without tests. And first of all, let me just push aside the whole notion of tests. Tests are, they're a really good way for teachers to assess learning, and I'm doing that in quotes, you'll, you'll understand why in a minute, when they have a bunch of students that they have to um, grade because they can't have that one-on-one -on -one time with each and every one of them to see how much they actually know. So that is kind of, you know, an, an easy, I would almost say generic way of finding out if kids understood what their lessons were about. But if you really think back to your time in school, most of you will acknowledge that tests are kind of one of those memorize and forget sort of things. A lot of times if you're good at studying or if you're good at school, you might ace tests really easily only to find out like a month or two later that you don't really remember a whole lot of what you got right on that test. So even though you might get, for example, an A a in biology for that rating period, two months down the line, it's not very likely that you're going to remember a whole lot of that anyway. So that is really the main reason that I don't use testing in, in my homeschool is because I want to be able to know for sure what my kids know. I want a more um, organic look at, at what their learning is. I want to know what their true learning and retention is. I don't want to tell them, oh, you're having a test Friday and then have them cram for that test just so that they get a good grade on it only for them to forget it later. This is something for us, assessments are something that are ongoing all the time. And it's not just something that happens, you know, on certain days of the week or when I say that a test is coming up. So let's just get into how you can assess learning without tests. And I'll just, I'll give you some examples, but again, the main point that I will say is that it really has to be an organic, personal thing with you and your children. You really have to pay attention when you are assessing kids in this way. But again, it does give you um, a, a more accurate model or a more accurate result of what your kids are actually learning. So for example, spelling. I don't give my kids a weekly spelling test. Um, I used to, but I actually stopped doing that several years ago. So you might be wondering, okay, well then how do you know that your kids are getting better in their spelling? Well, one of the ways is I can give you an example of my son, Luke. Now, two years ago, Luke was, and he, he would acknowledge this, he was a pretty terrible speller. He had a really hard time spelling almost anything. But I do have to say is that Luke was my child that did not start reading until he was eight. So it's kind of understandable that at nine, he still was having a lot of problems with spelling. But now, just two years later, I have noticed how much better he is at spelling. How have I noticed that? Well, first of all, in his writings, in his everyday writings, when he's writing in his journal, when he's writing in his notebooks, even when he's playing on his games, he doesn't ask me how to spell things um, as much as he used to. And in fact, I hear my other children going to him now, asking him how to spell words. And these aren't easy words. Like today I heard him telling one of his sisters how to spell hyper. Um, and he spelled it correctly. So 
And, you know, I also have to add that a lot of times now I actually hear him correcting. Now he's 11 now, and I will often hear him correcting his older sisters on their spelling because he has gotten so good at spelling now. And it's not because I've given him the tests every Friday. They really would have made no difference in how he was able to learn to spell. I think that the spelling practice that we did with the three times each every day, I think that definitely helped. And I think with all of the notebooking that we've done and all the copy work that we've done and all the reading that we've done, those things have definitely helped. So really, while spelling tests might be able to give you a grade for your kids, since I don't keep report cards for my kids, I don't need grades for them. And hence, I don't really need tests, even in spelling. So another um, example is in math. So if you don't give out math tests, you might be wondering, how do you know what your kids understand in math or, or if they're, you know, advancing in it? Well, with me, I can tell if my kids are learning the concepts in math by how much help they ask me for. Um, there are times that my kids will, now we do CTC math, my kids will zip through their, their problems and they will not even have to ask me a question, you know, for anything and they'll get a hundred on it. Then there are other times where they might have to call me over a couple times and I might have to help them with a couple of things. And still other times, there are times that I actually have to sit right next to them and I have to help them almost with every single problem. And that is how I assess my kids with their math. If I see that I am having to help them with most of their problems and if they really aren't retaining things, that is my way of being able to tell that, okay, maybe we shouldn't move on to the next lesson. Let's just stick right here until you have a better concept of what is going on. So that is really how I assess their math. Um, and also you have to look at it. Can they apply math concepts in real life? You know, when you're younger kids, when, when they're counting all of their change to go to the store, can they count their money on their own? Can they look at your living room clock and tell what time it is? Um, when they're, when you're playing Yahtzee with your kids, can they count the, the dice, all five dice on their own? Can they keep score? Can they add things up without making mistakes? When they're baking, can they double measurements? These are all real life ways that you can see if your kids are learning learning the math that they that you are teaching them. And again, these are all things that are happening without a test, at least not a written test. So reading and fluency is another one. I don't give my kids reading tests either. So if you want to know, you know, how fluently your kids are reading, that is a really simple thing. Just read aloud with them or ask them to read to you. But I'm not saying to do it. I know that a lot of times in school, the kids will have, I mean, the teacher will have the student sit down at, you know, at a desk and then they will have the child read and then they'll be marking off like how fluent, you know, their things were, what words they were stumbling on and they'll be taking notes. I'm not asking you to do it in that way. What I am asking you to do is be a mom and just sit there and read with your kids. Let this be, you know, just an intimate moment with your child. You don't need to constantly have yourself in teacher mode all the time. So sit with your, sit with your child and just let them read to you or read back and forth. And that in itself will show you how fluently your child is reading. Um, and I, that also goes into comprehension and not just reading comprehension, but you know, how much history they're retaining, how much science they're retaining, all of these other subject areas. Again, these are those subject areas that very often people will, you know, be kind of cramming for them and memorizing what the answers are. And then they forget them, you know, the next month down the line, they have no idea. And that's really what happened to me. I did really well in school. My report cards were pretty good, but if you ask me now, a lot of the things that I learned in school. I don't remember the things that I learned in school. Most of what I know now, I learned more as an adult. So how can you assess your child's learning like in reading comprehension or history or science or any of those other subject areas? Well, I would say just having conversations with your child, whether it would be natural conversations, you know, as you are doing chores together, or maybe after you're doing a read aloud with your kids and just discussing with your kids what you've been reading about or what new topic you've been learning about natural discussions, see how much they've been retaining and see how much they are learning simply by what they are giving back to you in that conversation. 
Another great way to assess learning in these areas is with notebooking, because if you're reading what your kids are writing about, that is a great way for, again, for you to see what they are understanding, the things that are sticking with them, how they've been able to put two and two together. And um, sometimes it's really interesting to see what their point of view is on certain things. So notebooking is another great assessment tool that is not a test. And again, you know, let's also talk about oral and written narrations. And I talked about discussing things with your kids earlier. And um, while oral narrations are also oral, like a discussion would be with your kids, what an oral narration is or a written narration is, you would simply ask your child to either tell you back what they remember from either what you were reading in your read aloud or maybe from what their chapter was about that they read that day or what experiment that they did that day. So you would ask them to tell you everything that they remember and everything that they learned from it. Or with older kids, you could also ask them to write that down. So oral and written narrations are, again, really great assessment tools that do not involve making your child sit down and take a test. So I know that the question is going to come. But if your kids want to go to college, how are they ever going to learn how to take tests if you don't give them to them in school? Well, first of all, I would have to say that it is very, very rare that a child will never come across any sort of test at all. Now, first of all, I did say that my kids do have to take standardized tests. So they already have a feel for what the standardized tests are like. And that is what the college entrance exams would be like anyway. Um, but, you know, even at church, for example, in youth group, they might be given some sort of tests. How many online tests do kids take? You know, questions, you know, to see like which character you're most like. And even though that doesn't have, it's not an academic, in an academic sense, it is still giving them a format of what the test is like. There are also test prep books out there. You can just go to Barnes and Noble or you can go on Amazon and you can order a test prep book if you're that concerned about your child knowing what a test is actually like. Or, you know, and also I should say the library too, like the library has SAT prep books. So it's not like not giving your kids tests while you're homeschooling them is somehow going to deprive them of this wonderful world of tests. Tests really aren't that big of a deal. Even if you sit down and explain to your kids that a test is just where you sit down and they will ask you questions and you have to mark down the right answer. It really isn't difficult. And I think that it's kind of one of those things that people think that you need all of this training for. You know, for example, the whole getting up early thing. Oh, if you don't make your kids get up early, how are they ever going to get up early for a job? Well, you set an alarm clock. So, you know, people don't think about those things and how we make a lot of things more difficult than they have to be. And I think that helping your kids to understand how to take a test, that that is also one of those things. It really isn't hard. They simply read the question and they write down the answer that is um, correct or at least that they believe is correct. So and yeah, it, you would have to have a more involved discussion if you're going to be talking about SATs or ACTs. But again, it really is one of those things that you don't have to be giving your kids tests all throughout their homeschooling years just so that they know how to do it to get into college or for when they're in college. Believe me, when they need to know how to do it, they'll do it. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one over on Instagram because YouTube disabled my comments. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.